most notable member of the clan, and I ain't talking Ku Klux, Clifford Smith, more famously known as Method Man, was a breakout rapper in the 90s that helped to leverage the underground image and sound of raw and uncut hip hop. Millions of records sold and an array of movies and sitcoms under his belt, he's been able to establish his own solo career aside from his Wu-Tang fam and brother from another mother, Red Man. But the journey to becoming powers, David McLean wasn't a smooth sailing ship. From his wild beef with Wendy Williams to his wife's cancer scare, let's take a look at the story of the method. He may be most notable for his years in the East Coast hip hop group, the Wu-Tang Clan, as well as his solo career. But Method Man is much, much more than just some rapper who rocked distressed hair and a dead eye. Born and raised in the New Jersey area for the majority of his childhood, he stayed in between homes. His parents' homes, that is. Hopping back and forth between his dad's Long Island residence and his mother's Park Hill home, he was, for the most part, a good kid. Enjoying the sport of lacrosse well into his early teen years at New Dorp High. This is where he'd meet friend and later Wu-Tang affiliate, Remedy. Bonding over their shared interest of music and the ever-rising genre of East Coast hip-hop, Method shot his shot at music, eventually signing with Wu-Tang's RZA, which, although wasn't an exact record label per se, was better than the position he had been in prior. The clan, amid Method's arrival, consisted of a total of 10 members and were still an underground unit, yet growing in popularity. Method being among the group's most popular members due to his freestyle ability. This also being one of the main factors as to why he was chosen to record a solo album outside of the group, all while still being in it. After the release of their debut album, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. Method chose to sign with Def Jam and his solo debut album, Takao, would be released a few short years later in 1994. Met would critically acclaim reviews, the album overall was well received by the masses and entered the US charts selling over a million copies. Featuring the hit song, All I Need, which if you aren't too familiar with, you might be familiar with its remix version featuring the queen of hip hop soul, Mary J. Blige. The remixed edition went on to win a Grammy, and it was during this time that he'd become close with fellow NY rapper The Notorious B.I.G. His status as a rap head had gone from an underground animated lyricist pioneer to a mainstream rap act appearing on Biggie's 1996 debut album Ready to Die. In fact, Method was the only featured artist on the album and even teamed up with Biggie's latter rival Tupac Shakur on his album All Eyes On Me, as well as his future right-hand man, Red Man, who was also featured on the album. During his run with the Wu-Tang, Method's image overall was that of a rugged rough rider. One concerning aspect of his costume, yes, costume, being his dead eye, making its appearance be known in several music videos, Bring the Pain and All I Need, he's been rocking the eye since 94, and fans believe that the wonky disability was a genuine defect. Whenever asked about the state of his eye, Method made sure to not give away too many details and kept things short and sly, which only added fuel to the curiosity fire. Despite the defect adding to his authentic image as a raw, underground hip-hop trooper, over the years, fans noticed that Method's eye wasn't dead at all. In fact, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. He simply wore a white contact lens in his left eye to appear more frightening. Surprisingly, he'd kept up the facade for a few short years before abruptly choosing not to wear it any longer, and honestly never said another word about it. His follow-up album, Takao 2000, Judgment Day, released four years after his debut with Wu-Tang, RZA, being a main producer. The title of the album, as well as the album itself, was heavily inspired by the apocalypse theories surrounding the end of the millennium and featured appearances by fellow Wu-Tang mates. Serving him well, the album ended up selling better than the first, thanks to the party track Judgment Day and his collab with D'Angelo, 
as well as appearances from other featured artists such as Lisa Left Eye Lopez and cameos from comedian Chris Rock, Russell Simmons, Janet Jackson, and Donald Trump. It went on to earn both gold and platinum certifications in the States as well as neighboring country Canada. Around this time, he'd also venture out and tour with Jay-Z, Ja Rule, DMX, and Redman on the Hard Knock Life Tour. During the tour, he and Redman would get together to record their collaborative album, Blackout, which will end up reaching platinum status, aiding in the duo's push from music icons to television stars. Starring in several films and TV shows, one film being the comedy How High, Although not a groundbreaking blockbuster film, the weed-fueled 2001 low-budget comedy stars Method and Red as Jamal and Silas, two friends who smoke a little Mary Jane laced with a little razzle-dazzle that help them ace their college exams and somehow wind up at the prestigious school of Harvard. The film has become somewhat of a cult classic and practically ran the MTV network at one point. Those who weren't familiar with Method and Red before were surely aware of their faces thanks to this film. Two years and at a continued incline in his career, he dropped his third album, To Cow Zero, the prequel. But it didn't solidify good or even mixed reviews this time around like he'd done with his other bodies of work. Critics stamped the project as party rap, calling it cheap and generic, since it featured too many mainstream artists like Missy Elliott and P. Diddy. Now, I get wanting your fave to not venture too far off from what made them them, but quite frankly, Method fans weren't all too pleased. Regardless of the reviews, it still went on to sell reasonably well, becoming certified gold by the RIAA. During the same year, he would obtain his own Fox sitcom alongside Redman, Method and Red, but the comedy would only last a few episodes due to Method himself probing fans not to tune in. Co-created by Meth himself, he contributed the show's cancellation to the network not taking his ideals and considerations into play, sacrificing a huge chunk of his creative visions. His next album turned out to be his best solo work to date, but the album overall failed to do well commercially due to its lack of singles and music videos, all courtesy of his label. Wendy P. Williams, no matter how messy she may be and how nosy we can be, showed us exactly why she is crowned the queen of messy. In 2006, she revealed on her radio show that Method Man's wife, Tamika Smith, had been diagnosed with breast cancer, despite him and Tamika not notifying the public of her illness. In fact, Tamika's own relatives didn't know about her situation, and the last thing she wanted was for such a diagnosis to be plastered all over the media. When news of Wendy name-dropping Tamika and putting her business on blast, needless to say, Method Man didn't take it lightly. He basically pulled a Will Smith and told Wendell to keep his wife's name out of her mouth, which she did over the years, but revealed during a much later interview that she once had a one-night stand with Method Man in the 90s. Going into detail, she recalled seeing him at a club where a fight broke out. Heading to the rafters, she spotted a semi-high method who called her over since he'd been on her radio show before. Rolling a blunt, the two smoked a fat one before Wendy initiated his follow to her place where she ran him a bath and, well, you know the rest. When Tamika got word of the story, she called Wendy out via social media and accused her of having low self-esteem as well as an obsession with Tamika and her husband but never denied the accusations. Not even once. From films like Belly, How High, and extensive roles on shows like The Wire, and a bunch of others, playing the role of high-powered and high-priced defense lawyer Davis McLean on the Power spin-off series, Power Book Two, Ghost, is his most recent role to date. The role helped dig Method out of the trenches of mainstream irrelevancy and also give him the opportunity to link back up with Redman, his right-hand man. Are you a fan of The Method? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments and stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.